Hi, welcome to this lecture on statistical hypothesis testing. A frequent situation in science is that you want to study a population to determine a population parameter of the population. The population here could, for instance, be uh, all individuals currently living in Sweden. A parameter of this could be the average uh, resting heart rates of these uh, individuals. We often find it impracticable to study the population in whole. It would be, for instance, hard to measure the heart rate for all the, the, the individuals in Sweden. So uh, instead we select a sample from the population. When sampling, you are introducing sampling errors. The sample itself can't cover all the variation of the original population and um, hence uh, the, this limited selection of individuals will uh, not always be uh, representative for, for, for the entire population. In the process, we also introduce measurement errors. Measurement errors can be both systematic errors, uh, or so-called biases, or random fluctuations, so-called so noise. All measurement errors are, are known as technical variations, but there's as well biological variations, uh, that is, uh, variation between the individuals, that also affects sampling errors. Often, particularly in, in um, biological research, we are not so interested in observing um, the pop one single population as such. We often want to contrast one population to another. So this could typically be that we're want to make an assessment about differences between healthy and um, uh, disease individuals. So um, the way we do so is that we re pick uh, random samples both from the healthy population and disease population, obtaining now random sample for them both. We can then form statistics uh, from this, i.e or e.g. The, the observed mean of, of the individuals. So when we do our measurements, we, we assess the individual measurement from, from each individual, and then we form a mean from this. The statistic itself is not uh, good enough to, to make an inference from, because we, we know that there will always be a small difference between whatever um, uh, sample we make, or, or there will always be a difference between the observed means of two, two different samples. Instead, we are wanted to make a statistical model of the difference of the, between these. So what would be reasonable to uh, observe a chance but between the, the, the difference between the observed means of the two um, samples? And the goal of this is to make finally an inference, that is uh, a conclusion regarding the difference between the, these two uh, populations. So um, we're studying the, the sample, we're, we're making samples in order to study the populations. And our inference, finally inferences should be a conclusion regarding all of the populations. So in order to do this procedure, we need a couple of uh, helpers. The first ones being the hypothesis that we put up. So a hypothesis is a statement about, about um, uh, a population parameter, and that could typically be uh, um, uh, something regarding uh, the means of all of our populations. And, um, the first one most important hypothesis we put up is the null hypothesis. That is uh, typically the situation we're not interested in. Um, so for instance, uh, we could assess that there's actually no difference between the healthy and disease populations regarding the statistic we, we are interested in. We as well sometimes make what we call an alternative hypothesis, and that might be more um, in line with the station we want to detect, i.e. that um, there is a difference between the, the healthy and disease population. The role of these hypotheses might not be obvious at first. Particularly null hypothesis is interesting. The reason why we make the null hypothesis in the first place is actually that we want to disprove it. So. Um, 
we are looking on the differences in the sample means, then we we'll want to say that actually we the difference in sample means that we observe is so extreme that it couldn't it's very unlikely that this will occur just by chance. So hence let's react the null hypothesis. The next helping thing we have is the, our sampling distribution. Um, that is um, a distribution, a sampling distribution, that's a um, uh, distribution of any statistic of measurements in a sample. In our case, it could be the mean. Um, and if we know the sampling distribution of the difference between in a sample mean under the null hypothesis, we can calculate how extreme that this difference is. The actual parameter that we assess from, from this, from the sampling distribution, is a p-value. So that's the probability of how extreme um, this current situation is. So uh, the probability of a result, observing a result as least as extreme as the one that was observed under the null hypothesis, this is known as a one-sided p-value. If we instead look on the absolute value of, of the uh, observed situation, we can assess as well uh, what we know as a two-sided p-value. That is, uh, how extreme is, is it that you either as large or as small as the current one, current situation. That's the current difference between means. A property that we, we will use later on is that um, when we do our uh, multiple hypothesis correction is that the p-values themselves by definition are uniformly distributed under the null hypothesis. That is, if the null hypothesis is true, uh, we are as equally likely to observe a p-value of 0.1 as 0.3 as 0.9. So if we repeat um, this uh, statistical inference procedure, we are interested in determine a difference between the healthy and the disease population. So um, the um, way we do so is by collect collecting random samples from, from both the uh, healthy and disease population. This is known as a sample. We then look on uh, the difference between a statistics of, of this, these samples typically the mean, and we can build up a statistical model of the properties of the difference in the means. We then make an inference, a uh, conclusion regarding the difference in the population. So we actually, by placing ourselves in a situation where we say that there's actually no difference whatsoever between the, uh, the healthy and disease population, um, we want to sort of assess how likely is it that we observed a difference as large as the current one. And the way we actually do this in the end is that we, um, if we find the, uh, the observed differences in, in observed means as, uh, as very, being very extremely low, then it means that there's actually very little um, reason to believe that the null hypothesis is true, and then we react the null hypothesis, and they, we actually make the conclusion that there is a difference between the health and disease population. 